Back in the day, light gun games were a big deal. Duck Hunt, Virtua Cop, House of the Dead, to name just a few. Unless you have an old school TV though, you just can't play these anymore. Until now at least. As far as I know, nobody has tried tackling this before, but I've made a simple device that makes almost any light gun game playable again on modern TVs. But first, before we get on to that, it'd be useful to take a look at how light gun games work and why they don't work anymore. The key thing to understand about CRTs is that the video signal coming into the TV pretty much drove the beam that actually drew the picture directly. If the console was outputting the brightness of a particular pixel, then the TV would be displaying that pixel at that moment. Light gun games use this to detect what pixel they are pointed at. The light gun has a lens which acts a bit like a telescope, focusing the light of the pixel it's pointed at onto a sensor inside the gun. When you press the trigger, on most light gun games, the screen flashes white. When the TV starts displaying the white pixel the gun is pointed at, the sensor detects the bright light and sends a signal back to the console. As the console knows what pixel it was currently outputting at the time, it now knows the pixel the light gun is pointed at. On new TVs this is completely broken. The whole frame is normally read in, processed which adds even more delay, and then displayed almost at once. Therefore, when the light sensor detects the light and sends it back to the console, it's already much too late and the console has already assumed the shot was off screen. This is where my device comes in. The video signal coming out of the console gets split between the TV and my device. My device waits for a particular pixel, checks if it's bright and flashes an LED if it is. The LED gets inserted into the barrel of the gun, mimicking the flash light on a CRT TV. This removes all the delay introduced by a TV because it's no longer involved. However, this doesn't solve the actual problem of knowing what pixel you are pointed at. Luckily for us though, Nintendo themselves already solved this for us. The Wii remotes, when combined with the sensor bar, are very good at determining where they are pointing. With a small bit of calibration, we can get a one-to-one -one mapping between where the Wiimote is pointing and the part of the screen we are aiming at. We just need to strap it to the side of the light gun. A Raspberry Pi reads the Wiimote data and sends it to an Arduino so it knows what pixel to inspect and when to flash the LED. With all that in place, here we are playing Duck Hunt on a real NES with a real zapper, albeit a real zapper with an LED held in the end of the barrel by Bluetech and a Wiimote held onto the side with elastic bands. As my device is sitting between the console and the TV, we can also inject new data into the video signal. If we want, we can add a reticule to the display and play it Wii style. And because of the way NES light gun games work, we can even change the difficulty. This is because consoles like the NES and the Sega Master System weren't fast enough to make light gun games work as I showed earlier. They used a similar system that requires less precise timing. When you press the trigger, they first draw a completely black frame this is an anti-cheat measure. Then each target is drawn as a white square. If the console receives a signal from the light gun within that frame, then it counts as a hit. So for NES and Mass System games, we can alter the difficulty by changing the radius at which we check for light. But this is not just a solution for playing 8-bit games. More up-to-date systems are also supported. By sticking the LED onto the end of a Virtua gun, we get to enjoy some classic Virtua Cop on the Sega Saturn, one of my favourite all-time light gun games. Or if Virtua Cop isn't your bag, how about sticking it into a Dreamcast gun and playing some House of the Dead too. So there it is, a Raspberry Pi to interface with a Wiimote, an Arduino to sample at the right point in a frame, and a small bit of analog circuitry to read the video signal is all it took to resurrect several generations of retro light gun games. If you want to know more, I'll post everything up on GitHub like normal. I hope you enjoyed the video.